So throughout the term of the working group, we had the ability to be able to go and speak to lots of different people from different backgrounds, stakeholders, community leaders and more. There's a whole range of key learnings that are within the report, but just a few highlights that I think are particularly important. Firstly, people told us about the need to invest in trusted community leaders to be able to spread public health messaging in a way that is already trusted and is done in a way that is relevant to them. We had lots of communication coming from the top down, but we also need to utilise the bottom up to be able to make sure information is spread far and wide, clearly and accurately. We also heard about the over-reliance on digital literacy and access to digital technology and data, which excluded people from having the information that they needed and potentially excluded them from jobs, education and more. We heard about the, uh, the importance of uh, factually accurate information and the spreading of misinformation and critically how helpless people felt in dealing with that online or with their own friends and families. We heard about the importance of trust in science and having access to science and scientific literacy and research, particularly when there were so many words that were being used, whether it was lateral flow test, isolation periods, whatever it might be, that were never in our everyday language but now are. So access to science, access to scientific information and for that to be trusted was critical. We also heard about the importance of local decision making and why it was it's critical that, particularly around public health, decisions are not simply made for people but with people. It creates trust in those decisions and it means that they're more likely to be adhered to. And finally, and perhaps most critically, we heard time and time again how systemic inequality, racial inequality, uh, women's inequality, gender inequality, homophobia, disabled discrimination, bigotry of all sorts and inequality and discrimination of all sorts cemented in it was cemented in across all of these different areas and exacerbated exacerbated existing inequalities during covid-19 and we hope that in this report that is clear that we need to take action on systemic inequality for us to be able to move forward through this crisis and to recovery So from this um, key learnings and the conversations that we had right across Scotland and from uh, members of the public, third sector and beyond, we have a number of recommendations that can be read in the report. Firstly is the need for a national participation strategy in Scotland. At the moment we have pockets of good practice when it comes to outreach and genuine co-design or co-production when it comes to decision making. This can't be a nice to do, it has to be a necessary thing to do for all different policy area and portfolio areas. So for that reason, we're calling for a national participation strategy. Secondly, linked to that is a participation programme which builds the capacity of those across communities to engage in policy making, know what's going on in the decision making houses around them, in the spaces of power around them, and how to critically influence that and hold that to account. Thirdly, the need for an accessible standard of communication. Whether information is coming from Scottish Government, local authorities, public bodies, it must be delivered in a standard way that uh, ensures that it is accessible for those whose first language may not be English, for those who are disabled, for those who um, have literacy concerns. It cannot be something that is done as an afterthought or something that somebody has to request we should be creating easy to read formats as standard practice. And finally, perhaps crucially from our uh, key learnings, is the need for an independent fact-checking service that people throughout Scotland can turn to, that is trusted, honest and fair, to be able to tackle the blight of misinformation that has plagued so much of our activity during COVID-19.